everyone, and happy March Mystery Madness. I am here with a very different kind of video. I am reading Agatha Christie's The Hollow, and I am going to try to guess the killer. Uh, so we're going to see how this goes. I have only read the first chapter so far. The Kindle says it should take me three and a half hours to read this. We'll see if the Kindle is right. I might end up doing some audiobook. I'm not sure, but for now, I'm sticking with the Kindle, and I have my notes from uh, the first chapter. Basically, I'm just going to write out the names of all the characters and if there's any little detail. This banner goes way past here, but this is the, the best setup I can find. You are in my pantry right now. Um, so I'm going to write out all the characters and um, I guess add more details to their bios as I go along and hopefully have different enough colors for them. I don't know if I will, uh, but I'm just going to do the washable markers that we had on hand. Um, and let's get started. Okay, so the first character who I don't know if they're going to have anything interesting about them is Gudgeon, and he is the butler, which now that I'm saying it out loud, ironic that it rhymes with bludgeon. I don't know if that is significant at all, uh, but I'm going to write Gudgeon. And by the way, if any of you lefties are watching, I am left-handed. And one of my least favorite questions that people ask that right-handed people ask is, how can you write with that hand? It's so like, I could say to them, how can you write with that hand? How do you write with your dominant hand? So anyhow, I digress. So the first character is Gudgeon the butler, and we just know that he's a competent butler. We know nothing um, else about him. I kind of want to draw clouds around them to make it clear that it's different characters, but then I'm worried that I will run out of room. So we're just putting Gudgeon over there. And then let's pick a very different color. Okay, I'm going to go with this color for Simmons the housemaid. We know really nothing about Simmons except that she is the housemaid. And then the couple that is hosting the weekend are the Ancatels. And there is Sir Henry, and he is married to Lady Lucy. And the first chapter, uh, Lady Lucy is talking with her friend Midge. I think Midge is purely a friend. Um, I don't think she's a cousin or a relation of any sort. And they're talking about who's coming for the weekend and how they've invited all the wrong people. So, you know, things are bound to get interesting when a mystery starts off where the host says they've invited all the wrong people. So yes, Sir Henry and Lady Lucy Ingatel. There's not many details that I have to put about them so far. I know that they don't loathe each other because I think uh, Agatha Christie has a fair amount of unhappily married couples and she would have, I think, declared it already if they loathed one another. And then the other thing that I am not quite clear on is there is a David Ancatel who is coming home from Oxford for this weekend and I don't know how he is related. Um, it could be maybe he's just Sir Henry's son. Maybe Sir Lucy is the second... Sir Lucy. Maybe Lady Lucy is the second wife. I'm not sure. But I'm going to put him down here because I know he's related in some way to the Ancatels. Just not sure which way. I briefly mentioned Midge, the friend. Um, I know she's friendly with Lucy, um, and that's about all that I know about Midge so far. Then we have Edward, who I'm predicting is going to be a very likable character. Uh, what we've been told about him is that he's sensitive, and he asked to come up for the weekend, and... Um, I think it's Lucy kind of didn't want him to come for the weekend, but she knew that he was very shy and he would feel like he would never ask to come again if she turned him down. So I think he's going to be very likable, easy to be around. And he is in love with Henrietta, who is also going to be visiting. And then Henrietta is our eighth character, and she does lots of kind of, she's kind of talented at whatever 
projects projects she throws herself into. She's skilled at DIY and um, seems to be a generally likable character. They're thinking that she will be really um, kind of a yin to the yang of another character named Gerda, Gerda Kristau. So Henrietta seems to be likable and maybe she will have a, a romance in this one. And then lastly, characters nine and 10, John and Gerda Kristau. John is likable and Gerda seems to be the real wild card. I think she's going to be the one that is draining on everyone, sucks the life out of them, and is completely oblivious about how draining she is. There we have it, all of the characters mapped out. 10 kind of characters I think we're going to be hearing regularly about. Now, a random detail that I was like, what is this, is Lucy mentions to Mitch that she asked the crime man to Sunday lunch. She doesn't give his name, and I'm like, who is this crime man? So we're going to find out who the crime man is, and we're just waiting for everyone to arrive. That was the opening chapter. I don't think I'll check in every single chapter, but I am going to keep this up and add any interesting tidbits that I find out about the characters, any data points, and I hope that you enjoy following me along, trying to solve the hollow, and this will be brimming over with spoilers. So do know that if you are uh, coming into this not having read the hollow, and if you aren't wanting to be spoiled, I would read the hollow and then come back and join me. Hi everyone. And so now an exciting development has happened. My friend Jess is, she's just game for so much bookish fun. And thank you Jess for making this a joint reading vlog. I know. Thank you for having me. When you asked me, I got so excited. I was like, yes, we need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Jess is a, a big mystery reader and um just she happened to be reading The Hollow at the same time, and I thought this is meant to be. So we're going to talk about chapters one through 10, and I think maybe also give our prediction for who we who we think done it. But before we do that, kind of, there's so much to unpack here. <laughs> um, Those so, so many characters that were introduced in the first 10 chapters. Yes. Crazy. Yeah, and it was... It was interesting to me that we hear about John and Gerda being married. I'm like, yeah, they're married. And then it's talking about Henrietta and how she loves John. And in my head, I was thinking Edward. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Like the guy that loves her, she loves it. And wait, wait, John, no, John's the married one. Oh. I didn't know they were to get, like, I also thought, I actually thought there was two Johns because they say like, oh, Gerda and John. And John, and then say like Henrietta and John, and I was like, oh, maybe there's two, and I was like, wait, no, it's same man that they're yeah. talking about, <laughs> same jerk. <sighs> um, and Ed, yeah. so sweet. <laughs> yes, and and this is a crime where you're like very okay <laughs> with who the victim is. <laughs> Not that you feel the murder is justified, but you're like, well, if somebody has to go, I mean, we're in an Agatha Christie book. Somebody's got to go. I'm so glad it was him. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's, um, I mean, at the end, you know, of the 10 chapters, he's juggling three women. So really, are we surprised that he goes? Which, okay, the third woman, you know, he has this long lost memory. And I feel like in Agatha Christie books, rarely is there just a completely useless detail that you're given. So I was like, ooh, he's thinking about this. I thought maybe he was going to go try to find her or something. And then like, no, there she is. Veronica just walks in. And I was not expecting her and at that point. Entrance. Like she makes, like makes the entrance of a lifetime. Like it was like her career dependent on it. I had, I also was con like thinking, well, how is this going to play out? Right. Like you said, she barely mentioned someone that's like, that has to be part of it. Like it's not just going to be an extra little thought. So I was like, well, how is this going to play? I did not expect it was going to be that way. I thought he was actually going to go back and like meet her or, you know, ask her to come down or something. But the way Veronica entered, I mean, that yeah. woman sold the show. <laughs> 
I know it was very theatrical and I, I did, I was so naive too. At first when she was there, I was like, what a wild coincidence. But then when, she, when she's I, alone with him, she's like, oh, you know, this is why I, I got this house in such a like terrible location or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. I stalked you. You, you come here the weekends. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, exactly. That's a little, little crazy too. Like I knew like, what, what was it? 15 years. I yeah. think that's how long it's had, like been since they saw each other. So yeah. the fact that she like had to figure it out where he would go on the weekends, not where he lived, which is weird, but where he would go like maybe once a year. Like that was just, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, now, as far as uh, other characters, I guess Gerda is really intriguing to me and I'm, heartbroken for her it's interesting because it seems like a lot of people think she doesn't have a lot of depth but mm -hmm. when you were in that chapter where she is fretting about whether to put the meat in the oven and risk it drying out or oh, yeah. that whole dilemma um you get a lot you I feel like see a lot more depth than her yes and also it gave me anxiety for her like, I was so nervous that John was going to, like, lash out or, you know, and he did. But then, like, she, it wasn't as much as she expected. But yeah. I think there was also a part, I don't know if it was in the same chapter or another chapter, where it says that she does know what's going on. She just knows how to, like, that she rather plays dumb in a way than let yeah. people know. So I'm also very intrigued about that because, I mean, you have to have a lot of, like, I can't find the word, but like a lot of willing you, like willpower to, to not lash out anything and just pretend that you're happy and you want to keep everybody happy. Like, cause she yeah. says, I know everything that's going on. It's just not me to like, let you know my, my thoughts or my opinions. Yes. Now, what do you think? Do you think she knows that he's been fooling around with Henrietta or do you think she's oblivious? I think she knows. I think she knows too, because of that chapter and how she's like, you know, people think I don't know things. I agree. I think she knows she hasn't let them know that she knows. But now the thing that's intriguing about her character then is, is does she just have such strong willpower that she can stay placid forever or did everything bubble over and then she just lost it on him? Like Veronica was the last straw. If she lost it on him and like, let's say she's the the killer mm -hmm. then yeah. I mean I would not be mad like yeah. I would not be like no Gerda why you you know like I would want her to stay like sweet and you know like I guess like very normal level-headed kind of Gerda yes. but I mean I would not be mad if she was the one but yeah. I mean I think it's she's like on my she's on my high list like on my top three she's yes. like third one because I would I think she has like the better reasoning behind it but then I feel like because of that it's just too obvious but then we know I get yes. Christy it's like like oh it's her and then at the end it's like oh no it's not but then at the end it is her like yes <laughs> yeah, no so totally like, I was like is she too obvious or is she so obvious that she's not too obvious <laughs> so yeah uh, but oh yeah good, go ahead good character. Gerda's a good character yes I enjoy yes. her um, and then I guess Edward, Edward, I really like so far. And I think he's also a great candidate, unfortunately, for being the killer. Yes. I think so too. I, the thing that I suspect Edward for was when, um, Henrietta and him were like taking the walk and they were talking, right. And he's like, you should go live with me. Like, if you find that you're home, right. Is it John? Like, is it no? And she's like, I love you so much that it hurts that I have to say no yeah and I that was for him like when he said I was expecting it not to be no like I like the tone he I read it and the tone that I think he said it was very like you have just made your biggest mistake whether it was by rejecting him or because that made him want to kill John like so he's yes. on on definitely on my list too yes 
Yeah. And I think he sees right through John. Like he, he's not fooled by him. He knows what an insincere person he is. But I wonder why people see, well, I, by people, I mainly mean uh, Lucy and I think, what's her name? Midge? Madge? Midge, yeah. Midge, that they see like, oh, wow, like Edward, when he's next to John, like he, he's just someone like unrecognizable. Like he's very mm. like mm. and sad and like glump, like shoulders. Um, like you know like it very like that like once he's compared like when he's alone everybody's like oh dear Edward but when he's next to John it's like who is that man like even John said how many times have I met him like three times oh he oh. he doesn't have that kind of faith. you know like so I wonder why he makes himself do that I mean he's like an heir to I can't remember the place but I mean he's he's yeah. good and well known you know but next to John he like becomes small well and that's interesting you talking about people don't notice him as, as much when he's next to John I feel like there's going to be a theme in this of appearances being deceiving because the whole thing too um what our first chapter where we're actually seeing Henrietta she's doing the sculpture and oh something about appearances and the sculpture and things being deceiving how they look at first and they might change into something else I don't know it's just intriguing to me that whole chapter I think was brilliant because of how you know like I'm not an artist but I've heard of like the artist being like I need my muse like what's my muse you know so when she's like I've been looking for this sort of face or the thing that she did with Gerda too, like I've been looking for those kind of like slump shoulders and, you know, and, and I would see Gerda and she has them, like she would only use the things that she likes. And for, what was the girl's name? Um, Doris. And for Doris, when she saw, she was like, hey, I, I need to, can I use you for a sculpture? But then because of how Doris was like, just talking and talking about like all this nonsense, she like ended up seeing Doris in, in Nausicaa or what what the name of the the sculpture mm -hmm. was yes. and I just find, like I don't know how Agatha Christie got all that information of like artists but she, I think she nailed it I think she did a really yes. really good job yes yeah no totally I'm really enjoying this one and I'm surprised at how much I'm enjoying it because we haven't seen Poirot yet he's late into this one I know. And I think that's one, one thing that um, usually Agatha Christie readers would complain if they love Poro. Like, we're already, I made a note. I said, page 79, still no Hercule Poro. Like, yeah. just, <laughs> just to far. mention him. And like, the way they mentioned him, the crime man. Like, <laughs> like, Lucy, I invited the crime man. Like, what? Okay, you know what? Was, Real like, talk. I feel so dense. It did not occur to me that that was Poro when they said the crime man. I kept being like, who is this crime man? Yeah, because I think she said, the reason why I know was, was Poro was because she mentioned, let me see if I can find it real quick, but she mentioned um, the no egg head or no egg, something like that. Oh, so I wow. was like, it has to be Hercule Poro in wow. my mind. Yeah, no, I'm glad I'm reading this with you because I, it's really funny. Um, also, when they're all uh, practicing shooting, I'm like, okay, we're in a murder mystery. We know now it's going to, someone's going to die from a gunshot. That's like, oh my gosh. yeah, it's just not coincidental. Yes. And also that uh, now that we're talking about the guns. Oh yeah. It says, um, I've asked the crime man to lunch on Sunday. It will make a distraction, don't you think so? Crime man, like an egg, said Lady. <laughs> said Lady Lucy. So I thought, oh, it has to be Poro. Yes. In my mind, I've had a Poro, a Hercule Poro mystery, but I was like, seriously, a crime man, like an egg? Like, yes. no. Yes. So much disrespect in that one little sentence. Yes. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, I can't believe, uh, yeah, it was completely lost on me. Um, oh, also this whole John having Ridgeway's disease. And of course I was Googling it and it was like made up for the hollow by Agatha Christie. Um, but it says that the, your cortex degenerates 
And so I wonder if there were, was he acting even like, because he's a weird guy, was he acting even more unusual than he normally would have? Ah, oh, I think so. But then nobody seems to be like, oh, you're acting weird, John. Like nobody mentions yeah. that. Like, I, I just feel like that that's just him, which is so weird because I feel like John could have been a great guy because the yeah. way he, you know, like he, like everybody had talks like really high of him, like obviously thinking that nobody knows about three women, but I think he would have been like a really great guy. But I think Veron like Veronica just like was like, if you don't stand up to yourself, women are gonna like be all over you or like stump all over you and yeah. he decided to do that with Gerda like make sure she's like down and you know submissive yeah so it have been like a really good husband and also with the kids like he just didn't seem to really enjoy his children no that made like, me really I, sad seeing him around his kids yeah. like the only part that was nice was when the when what's her name Sina yes yeah, Sina was like I'm reading the the cards like you know like I'm gonna read the cards dad and like that little scene was an okay scene and then that was it, it was like see you later kids yes <laughs> you know? yes okay our predictions as of chapter 10 which I'm thinking maybe mine will change by because we'll predict again I think it's chapter 27 who we think the killer was but as of now I'm going to predict, I'm going to give two, which is kind of cheating, but either Gerda or Edward. I could see Gerda just like snapping because you said it takes a lot of like self-control to stay like that, that calm and maybe reach a breaking point, um, which is your husband not only having one woman on the side, two women on the side was just too much, um, or Edward. Now this, this fourth proposal he really thought that Henrietta was going to say yes um yeah okay those are, and those are my yes those are my two guesses what is your guess or your two guesses my two guesses I would have to say Gerda as my second one my top one it's a little like out of the thing but I think will be Lucy because they're just Ooh. the way they talk about her I feel like there is a reason why they talk about her the way they do. Like, remember when there was like the gun, they were doing like the hunt scene and then they're like, oh yeah. And remember when you shot the, those two, uh, what was it like gangsters or or something like that, the word that they use. And it's like, and um, you shot one in the leg and you're in the shoulder. And he's like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, the risk was me. Like the husband was like, I thought you were risking me. You know, like, yeah. oh, yeah, yes. but you you made it kind of alive. So to me, I was like, why why are people treating Lucy the way that they do? Because everybody seems to be annoyed by her, but like they love her completely. Ooh. Yeah. And then I actually wrote down a quote from that chapter. Lucy always kills her man, which now I'm like, ooh, thinking about that quote. Yes. Because, and then I think there was another one. Um, I don't think I highlighted, but I think there was another one along the lines that said um, that I'm afraid she thinks she can get away with murder. I think Sir Henry was telling oh. Mitch about it. Yes. Ooh. Okay. What's that? There was something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. No, there totally was. This is really a compelling argument for Lucy. Mm. right because I mean like there's so much like negative throwing towards her like she doesn't do anything mean like you know but people do say that like oh like Gerda was saying how kind she is and then uh Henrietta was like okay darling she's not kind she's just you know like uh I guess like a person with manners but she's not yes. really kind like so my thought, I think Lucy has something to do with it because she brought everybody together and she was all anxious about it. So I'm like, well, why are you going to invite people if you like are super anxious and thinking like separately they're good, but together it's like chaos. So yes. I, she's 
he's on my list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I invited all the wrong people this weekend. <laughs> Nobody made you do that. What do you, why would you do that? Ooh. Okay. Well, I will be curious and we will check back in together. Yes. Chapter 20, right? Yes. Okay. Chapter 20. All right. So if anyone is watching this and you are reading along with us, I hope that you are enjoying this so far. All right. Jess and I are back to discuss chapters 11 through 20, and they were quite eventful. Yes, we're at the juicy part. <laughs> yes. Um, immediately, since Gerda is there holding the gun, I'm like, okay, she didn't do it. <laughs> yes. Like, she's there in shock, and everybody's, like, watching her. She's just there with the gun. Like, she yes. never dropped it. She's just, like... <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what's crazy to me, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like we haven't gotten any kind of play-by-play -play of those exact moments from suspects yet. No. Everybody's just kind of like, I got there, and this is what I saw. And that's it. Mm. Like, we haven't really... Um, I guess gotten like the really details of of how everybody like why is it that everybody got there but like from all the different possible sides you could get into that swimming pool yes the all the entrances somebody was there and it's like yes. everybody at the same time like okay <laughs> very suspicious and mm -hmm. um <laughs> like who somebody saw something. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. there's not just one person who committed the murder. I feel like someone else saw the actual murder. I think so too. I That's what I was thinking, Kate. I think that there is possibly an accomplice. Like I think there is a killer mm. and an accomplice. That's what I'm thinking because mm. everybody got there. So like you said, either it's one sign it's keeping like keeping it quiet because nobody said Oh, she did it. Even with Gerda, like they think that she did it. And everybody's like, Lucy's like, go ahead, Gerda, go back to your room and rest. It's like she just killed someone. And well, according to you, right? Because they all believe Gerda did it. So I'm like, you in your mind, you're like, this woman killed her husband, but go rest. Go back into your room. Go rest. The police would get here. Like, nobody's panicking everybody's feeling sorry for Ger Gerda and it's like okay but you all think she's guilty but nobody feels alarmed yeah, yeah. and I feel like it's they're all being really weird about Gerda like oh poor Gerda you know like like she's a victim when if you really think she killed her husband then she's unhinged like yeah maybe she was married to a yeah. philanderer but that was a bit of overkill to <laughs> Then yeah. <laughs> you can, if that's what you think she did now also I'm waiting to see more layers come out for Gerda because when she is with her sister Elsie and Elsie says something about how attractive his secretary is like implying like oh, maybe yeah. he messed around and Gerda's like why would you even say that like I can't believe you you'd accuse him of something so either mm -hmm. maybe she's trying to put on a good front in front of Elsie or she's actually oblivious about the fact that he was unfaithful that whole thing was it just an act I guess it could have been an act I think it was an act too because I feel like um like I I think she knows about Henrietta she like knows. I I feel like she has something yeah and I think she was just putting like a front of like I get to call my husband unfaithful not you kind of thing <laughs> yes. you know like keep calling like carry I'll on. deal with it not you yeah and especially when people die they usually like don't like to speak ill of the dead so uh, I think she's just kind of like he's already dead let it go how dare you say things of my husband it's like like nobody would say it when he was alive so why even right. mention it you know like yeah. that's what I think but I think she like I think she knows but yes. they, they never had anything going on though so 
like this secretary what was her name like she couldn't give like a rats about him like she was just like oh he's so just, annoying <laughs> yeah I think she I think she didn't really like him I, th- mm-hmm. <laughs> I think she just didn't like him that much he would be really intense to work for um, yeah and he was upset that she wasn't showing any like interest like what's wrong with this woman <laughs> yes and yes. it's like okay John <laughs> nobody yes. likes you not everybody likes you sorry now mm-hmm. I think I am fully convinced that it is Lucy. One, because her story with the whole gun in the egg basket thing, like, why? Why was it in the egg basket? Even though exactly. that's- Exactly, like, Inspector, you tell me. Why did I put the gun in the basket? <laughs> Inspector's like, all right, is she- <laughs> Like, I feel like if he was in the 21st century, he'd be like, is she serious? Like, why is she asking me yes. why she did something? Like, it was just like, he just didn't know if it was like, really how she is, or she was putting up a big, like, dumb front. Yeah. But the uh, that scene had me laughing, like, Lucy, are you serious asking somebody else that doesn't even know you of why you did that? And then she asked the husband, Henry, you must know why I did that. No, I don't, darling. <laughs> no, I do not know why you did that. And why well, I must have done it for a reason. <laughs> I, yes, clearly. Um, I also think that she is really kind of observant about everyone, right? How she's like, oh, I invited all the wrong people this weekend. But mm-hmm. it seems really specific who she invited and how they keep saying now, you know, before Edward seemed so, uh, I don't know, like lackluster in comparison to John. But now that John is dead, Edward is starting to come alive and come into his own. And she says specifically about how Edward will inherit the um, the house. And mm-hmm. I think she just knew that if John was out of the way, that then Henry Edward would be like, you know what? Actually, Edward is pretty great. Um, I, I think feel like it's really high. Yeah, like I feel like if Lucy really is hinged, like I think she would think this is a good excuse. Like, oh, I need yes. to kill John so Henrietta and Edward can get finally get married. Like that's like if she's really crazy, I think for her this is like a justifiable thing to do. Like, yes. oh, it's okay. She'll forgive me later. Like she'll thank me later. Like Yes. Yes, totally. Um but I think Henrietta is still not falling for Edward, right? Like, I, I remember well, that scene where where she's like, why, you think, like, I'm in distress, like, I can, I'm running to you, and I don't know what, like, but I think that was, like, the first scene of, like, after the death of John, so. Yes, that was, like, chapter 11 or 12, mm-hmm. and then later on, it might have been, like, chapter 19, I feel like she was like, you know what, actually, Edward is, he's a great guy, something like that. Like once she thought about it more, um, I think it's interesting too. It seems like it's possible that the time that Veronica just waltzed into the hollow and Mm -hmm. might not have been the first time she had seen John in 15 years because how the inspector, is it Bracebridge? Yeah. Okay. How he keeps asking her, like, you're sure this is the first time that you saw him? And he shows her the familiar note, which that kind of explains it. But then I'm like, I do wonder, maybe, maybe actually she had seen him like sometime before this weekend prior. Right. But you then know, in between. But then John has said that they haven't like seen like I don't think John would lie. Like he hasn't oh. lied about Henrietta, like to us as readers. You know? Okay. And the fact that he's like, why do I keep going back to that? But the thing is that I want to know really how how um what's her name veronica or what's her name Mm -hmm. veronica yeah veronica like like i feel like maybe she and edward you know like i i just (gasps) feel like it's very shady how she knows exactly where john was going because she doesn't know anybody else so how did she find out you know like how did did she she, who did she ask Mm. so I don't know. I think that's why I think there's an accomplice in here. Yeah. If it's Lucy, I think Lucy doesn't need anything. I think Lucy just <laughs> thinks like she did it for like everybody's happiness. Yes. 
I still don't like how it hasn't been explained how David is a relation. I think, is he just a cousin? Is that what he's supposed to be? I think so, too. Okay. I think, because they were just like, oh, yeah, and David, okay? Yes. <laughs> and so, just how, like, David is very, I if, I think if it's David, if there's not a really background story for this, like, how mm-hmm. he was involved with John, like, I think it would, like, destroy my prediction of, like, a five-star for this book. Oh. Because I feel like, you know, like, he's just, since the beginning, being thrown there, like, uh, a cousin like a, a cousin from like a third cousin we don't really know about him he's very yeah like they don't even make him likable so I no. hope like he's not ends up being the killer and if he does then I want like yes. a super juicy story like <laughs> yes yeah if they could have it be kind of unlikable but then he's got to have some layers deep down mm-hmm. he's got to have more interesting things like he never he never felt like his mother loved him as a child you know something like that yeah something yes or maybe he was like in love with Gerda or something you know like something yes. that's gonna make him be like I need to kill this man yeah because right I'll now be he just feels he feels like he's like rounding out the cast yeah like when we read like um like you're reading it's like David and you're like oh David he's here like <laughs> yes like he's not a character like just pops out like like yes. Veronica's entrance like, I just think of Veronica and I just picture like very flamboyant, like just like super feather totally. flocks. And <laughs> no, like, like she's like a bombshell. Yes. Yes. And then I do I guess... feel sad for the kids. <sighs> yes. That made me really That's sad the how the one thing. boy with his science experiment, how he was like, why, why am I not looking forward to it anymore? That's really sad. And how, like, they overheard that he was, like, murdered. Like, that's got to be tough. Like, right. mom, promise me you're going to find who did this. It's like. Yes. That's really it's sad. sad. Yeah, I, I um, like that Agatha Christie kind of added that layer to the story. Like, brought it back. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. brought it back that, hey, they, they had children together. Like, yes. yeah these are these are rich people people's children it's like in Downton Abbey (laughs) when they see their kids for 15 minutes out of every day I know it's like (laughs) wow that's that must be kind of cool I know I know I'm like simultaneously judging and being like oh wow what a gig I know like oh if only I had a nanny (laughs) yes so I think right now we're both convinced it's Lucy Yes. Okay. We will reconvene after chapter 27 and make final predictions and observations. Yes. All right, we are back for chapters 21 through 27. And I feel like, I mean, this book just gets more and more eventful and ominous feeling. How are you feeling about it? I think I know who the killer is. (laughs) Lucy? I actually don't think it's Lucy because now she's so obvious. (gasps) Who do you think it is? I think it's, well, for sure, for sure. Like, in my opinion, I think it is Edward. Really? But then I think (laughs) it's David, just because in this chapter, we hear Lucy saying, um, I would do anything for, they're the last, what is it? What was their last name? Angatel. No, um, David's Ain- Ainswigs. They're the last Ainswigs. Oh. And then um, Sir Henry's like, you know what, Lucia? I think that you only care about David. So I think she would cover, like, I think she would just cover up for them, for either or. I don't well, think I, she would cover for anybody else. And it is interesting because there, when 
um, when Poirot is talking to the inspector, he says mm. basically he thinks they all know who did it at this point. He thinks yes. the family all know who did it. So I think you're and they're definitely covering. not just one person. It's so funny. I I just I am not good at picking up the signs and everything. And so I I think I'm still gonna stay with Lucy, Lucy plus someone else. But mm-hmm. I can I I don't really think I'm right. <laughs> But I just have trouble like changing my vote now. I know. Like I know this is supposed to be like our last predictions, but I just can't still narrow it down to one person. Cause I honestly thought it was Lucy. I was like, it's she's just crazy, you know? But like how she told Sir Henry, like, oh yeah, I killed John because John was in the way of Edward and um Henrietta. And then she was like, I was like, she is just confessing. What? Like I was writing down the notes like is this really happening? And then she's like, but I wouldn't do that. And I was like, okay, you just gave a full on confession. And at the end, it's like, I'm just kidding. It wasn't me. And then her going to her kill Poro. I think she's has guts or she's really like crazy. Not there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that whole conversation with him was weird. So, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. the way I sit down with all of the suspects is just around the corner. Um, yes. How about Edward's least romantic proposal ever to Midge? At first, I was like happy they were ending up together. And then she's Me like, but what about, he's like, well, you know, I proposed to Henrietta three times and she just doesn't want to. Then you should follow it up with, and it was then I realized that I, it, you were the one I truly loved. It, it's like she's the rebound. He doesn't at all act like yeah. he's suddenly fallen in love with her. It's like I think he's suddenly seen that she's a grown up for one, and yeah. that she's a decent person. But he doesn't at all act like he's affectionate to her in a romantic. Yes, way. like I feel this should have been a a duology where the second book would get all the love story. You know, like at least we know that he's realizing that you know what Midge is such a great person like I think I would be happy with her and then you know just like stay as like oh I'm gonna like I don't know fall in love with her like get to know her and fall in love with her because he even admits that he doesn't know the new Midge so how can you propose to someone where you're like I don't know this new one but marry me move into Ainswig and then she's like him and Henrietta had something going on and at, at the end he's just like proposes to her and Rich is like what about Henrietta like oh I proposed to her three times she said no and it's like but I thought you guys were gonna get together like I thought you finally were gonna be something you know and then yes. he ends up proposing to someone else and let's talk about that wedding planning Lucy saying we should just keep all the people that came for that were here during the murder you know, just keep it short. It's like, how are you going to invite those people again to your wedding? Like, it's just so sad. She's like, unhinged. Like, no. Lucy she is. She really is. She is not with it. Who's going to be the guest? The same ones that were here during the murder. Like. The, the whole the whole gang back together again. I know. Back together again. Let's see who dies this time. Right. Um, okay, oh. so two things that we we were like talking after we were filming the last time. Oh, yeah. So one is you pointed out like, why is this a Poirot book? Exactly. Like it just feel page 79, we see Poro. Like we still don't see Poro, but I think like right the next chapter, he's coming in and he's like, Well, wow, really? They're faking a crime for me. Like I am just so tired. So it's funny. frustrating. That was so funny. And then he's like, wait. It, it is not there it's real like this thing is yes. not an act like Wait there are second. there really is a murder <laughs> someone yes. is dead oh. and then it just up to this chapters I think this one so far the the last couple of like chapters that we read I think we see a little bit more of him so I think it's like making up to be but I feel like they really didn't need him because the inspector yeah is good at questioning and he's good like mm-hmm. at you know like not trusting anyone which I think yes. like that's Poro like he's never gonna trust anyone till he finds the truth so this yes. inspector like if it was a standalone it would have been awesome mm-hmm. but um 
so far in the last chapters, I think we do see a little bit more Poro. And I mean, he's kind of making it up. Like, we're just kind of like, okay, I'm satisfied you're there. But I mean, if it was a standalone, it would have been better. Yes. Yeah, no. And I, it could be that at the end, Inspector, is it Bracebridge? Is that his name? Yes. Yes. Bracebridge. Uh, okay. Isn't there... Isn't that side note the Gilmore Girls episode where the in like the uh pe- they were gonna have a whole group of people come and they're snowed in like at the airport and is it called the Bracebridge dinner? I think it is. That's really funny. Yeah, but um, there's no murders in Gilmore Girls. No, that would have been like the best, like the best uh, cozy mystery small town. Oh, kind it of. would it totally? They should have had like a like murder mystery event at the in one weekend so we could have had a murder mystery episode oh uh, yes that would have been really fun but the whole thing that just gave us but like who stole or what was it like a crime scene outside of um taylor's dosi's market <laughs> <laughs> that was so fun it was well that was really funny with the chalk and then also that one time michelle thinks these two guests are stealing things from the inn, the dragonfly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he could be the amateur investigator. I know. Oh. He would have been so good. Yes. So, sorry, I, I rabbit trailed. But what I was saying is, it could be at the end that Inspector Bracebridge has totally the wrong guess. And Borrow's like, what are you thinking? And he has to step in. That's, or otherwise, maybe it's just she kind of, she did say she got kind of tired of Agatha Christie got kind of tired of Poirot after writing so many books with him. So maybe she's like, I'll give the people what they want. I'll, you know, I'll sprinkle a little bit of Poirot in there, but I won't have to spend that much time on the page with him. Yes. And it's so sad. Like I'm going to go a little bit out of like line here, but as a reader, I don't like, like Agatha Christie's my, like I can say it's my favorite author right now, right? Like mm-hmm. I read a couple, I've loved her books, but I don't want to know anything about her life other than what I've known that she's disappeared for 14 days. Um, I Which think she had a daughter cool. or she had, yes. And then she was married twice, I think. Yeah. And like, that's because of I know, not because I looked it up or searched her. But yes. I don't want to read any biographies because I feel like if she does or says something that I'm like, <gasps> like, I won't see it the same. Like that's for her through Poro. I did yes. not know until like on my meetings, book clubs, they'll say like, oh yeah, she doesn't like her Poro as much. Like they were just forcing her to make more books because he was famous with the readers. Right. I was like, oh wow. Like that's just sad. Oh, like, they, oh I'm sorry. Did one, it shatter like, your, your heart? I, I was like, oh. I didn't know that like I did not know that she was doing that you know so it's just kind of like well maybe like now that you like that you pointed out again I think that it's just that like at the end because there's some books towards the end where we don't really see much of him like Mm -hmm. I think Curtin is the most by him but I don't I won't ever read that I think we talked about it we're just not gonna I I did not handle it emotionally ever I watched it's not exist it destroyed me and I would I would have to like curl up into a fetal position and cry for a couple days after finishing (laughs) so it's just not worth it because as fastidious and like kind of fussy as Poro can be I'm very very fond of him because I love that he is a true gentleman in that how others behave towards him does not affect the respect and dignity that he shows to others Exactly. And it also shows that uh, we always see that like, oh, it's just a, he's a foreigner, you know, like, oh, he's he, what does he know about our small town and stuff like he's not even from here and stuff. But they never do anything ill towards him on well, some books. Right. Yes. But like most of the books, they still respect him. Like, yeah, they're with their faces, yeah. you know, like their tips up tight. But it's just more mainly like, oh, you know, he's here doing his job. I'll still they're kind of sort of respectful towards him still yes yeah no I agree I think they kind of Mm -hmm. yeah they feel that way all right I will wrap this one up so my final guess I think I'm going to stick with Lucy and I don't know who helped Lucy which is kind of a cop-out I should pick someone that helped her 
let's go with Henrietta. Okay. Ooh. All right. That's just my wild guess. All right. And your yes. final guess. My final guess would be Edward did it. Okay. But Lucy's Lucy helped him. Ooh. That's okay. what I think. Okay. All right. We will reconvene tomorrow and we'll see if either of us was right or if we're totally both <laughs> off. <laughs> Let's just get to it. Here we are, the last discussion. And she tricked us. When I found out, I was like, well, technically, if we were a test, Kate got like a 50, <laughs> which I, on the other hand, got a zero. <laughs> I was so sure. Oh. Triple bluff. <laughs> was there's Gerda with the gun I'm like oh no 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 see no that's what we're supposed to think it's her no 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 I know exactly. and then it will be this vicious cycle if there's ever another Agatha Christie like that I'll be like no she wants us to think but it is them but then she's done that before so yeah now I'm just gonna go with like the obvious one I'm just gonna <laughs> be like it's her she she was there holding the gun the gun it's like it's like she gets amused, you know, by like yeah. saying like, oh, but, you know, we were thinking at first it was Gerda, but then when we see that she's the one holding the gun, we're like, okay, well, that's too obvious. Like, that's not yes. going to be it. Yeah. And then it, started, it was it. <laughs> now, keeping it spoiler free for the murder of Roger Ackroyd, but have you read it? Yes. With that one, I feel like she was like... I can't believe this idea that I have. I can't believe I just came up with that. <laughs> yes. Because, I mean, that one, it was, I think it was one of her first where, like, the narrator is um, un unreliable, I guess you yes. can say. Like, we don't, right? So I think, like, yeah. she got, like, I just wonder how she got that idea. Like, how do you go from, like, saying, oh, this is something new, you know? It's like, and I mean, now crime that rely on that she probably I had many, many stories swirl she probably had like many stories swirling around in her head and so you know it's just I, I guess for creatives you know you just get a brainwave mm -hmm. and she's she's really good at it because I honestly thought I was like for sure if I'm not right Kate is right. And when we read it, I was like, okay, well, at least Kate kind of passed. Like, yeah. So then with Edward's attempted suicide, though, I was like, oh, Jess is totally right. It was him. Like, he was just like racked with guilt then. That's why he tried to commit suicide. Yes, that's what I thought. The reason why I also chose Edward was when. Him and March were, you know, like walk taking us a, a walk, and then he's like, "Oh, have you been here?" And he's like, "Yeah, with Henrietta," and she's yeah. like, "You know what? Like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not gonna be happy with you because you still love her, and I don't know what." And he just like let her go. Like he was so quiet. She said yes. that he was like lost in his own mind, and I was thinking maybe he's letting her go because he know. In my mind, he was a killer. So I was like, that is why he's letting her go because he's a killer. They're probably going to find him. And that's what I was so sure was Edward. But I mean, I was completely wrong. I, and I, I mean, I really like, I really like Midge. I do not have the best feelings about her and Edward's future relationship. It was like, so they bonded it's, over his suicide attempt. Yes. Like to me, it was very like, why was it so hard for him to say, no, I love you instead of like, let me die. And if she comes for me, then like, I'll marry her. And it's like, no, why not just tell her? No, you know what? I was in love with Henrietta, but she's not the same person she was. 
and I'm falling in love with you. Like that would have been better. Like, oh, let me learn to love you. Then yes. like, let me just die and be like, oh, Mitch, you're so warm. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I yes. guess that's romantic in there, but it felt very manipulative. Like it, it was just like the same thing. I was like, I do not ship them. Like yes. I, I like Mitch, but I do not ship the relationship. Yes. No, I agree. So I kind of still feel like Poro maybe wasn't totally necessary to this. Sadly. He was not. Like he was good for coming in for the safe, for Henrietta safe. But other than that, there was nothing that, like there was one thing that he said that I was like, okay, he got, he's like, this must be it. And I think I wrote it down. Let me see if I can find it. And I was just kind of like, what, what do you mean? This is it. Like, it doesn't make sense to me, obviously. Yes. But. But then that was it. Like, that was, like, one thing that it's when he's trying to say, like, nowhere near it, away but together. And it's, like, that must be it. And he, yeah. like, tries to explain it at the end. And I was still confused. I was, like, like, I get where he, he was going, but it's still not clear to me. Yes. Yes. And the ending also felt like it just. I was not satisfied with the ending. Like I was satisfied that Gerda did it because we, she was like one of our like first guesses. That's true. But, but the whole reason behind it, like the whole Henrietta helping her because John said Henrietta, how do I did not see it as a reader that yeah. she cared enough for John to do John's bidding. Like yeah. I did not yeah. think John loved Gerda as much as that the supposedly Henrietta says John loved Gerda because he never showed it and he never said I'm no. so in love with her you know like I she annoys me but I still love her like he never said those words and to me I'm like how do you, does Henrietta think oh he wants me to protect Gerda like I knew it when when John said my name I knew what he meant and I was like yeah. well you're the only one girlfriend because I did not like I did not see. Yeah. No, I I agree. That was. I don't know if I bought that. Although maybe part of the point of that is Henrietta's warped perspective. Kind of. Mm -hmm. But I guess John saw Gerda shoot him. Like he saw it happen to him. I don't know. Yeah, that was. I I had trouble buying that. Me too. Like, I, I guess, like, I would understand if he didn't want them to find out because then the kids, you know, like, now the kids are left without a father and a mother. Like, this was very cruel to bring kids. Like, I don't know why there's kids. Like, it, they don't make any kind of, like, how do I say? Like, you forget that they had kids. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, only when they mention, we remember, oh, he has two children. Or when something tragic yes. happened, we're like, oh, but the kids. But the, I don't think it was necessary to bring kids unless she wanted it to make it, like, cruel and sad. But the only cruel and sad were for the kids that were left behind. Yeah. No, I agree. Because kind of everybody else was better off without John around. Yes. Everybody seemed to be better you're yeah. you're right everybody seemed to just be like like a spell was taken away everybody was yes. like oh now Henrietta sees Edward and then Gerda feels free and the kids yeah. they wanted to know who did it but they nothing really completely changed like their mannerisms or whatever like nothing was I guess said that we noticed a big change in them they were just like yes. wanting to know what happened to their father yeah um Luke seemed very like well, she always seemed very like giddy, like, oh, somebody died, but it's okay. Everybody, let's go have some tea. <laughs> like, okay, Lucy. But I, I like think this sounds so weird, but I think way less of Lucy even now that I know she didn't do it. Like, no, she, I just, she's just bonkers. Like, she didn't kill someone, but she's just very out of touch and just in a completely different 
on a completely different planet. I was expecting like a also big reveal of why she is that way. Like in my mind, I was thinking like, you know, she's just playing a character to get away with murder. But no, yeah. like she was not part of it. And she said she knew. But I don't think she really knew because she went to Henrietta instead of like yes. Gerda. But I don't know if she went to Henrietta because she knows Henrietta was helping Gerda. But she was yes. very like, oh, I know, I know, like everything. Like I, mm -hmm. I know who did it and I'm just hoping they cover it and let's, let's just let it slide, let it be. And it's kind of like, okay, because she didn't really seem to like Gerda at all at yeah. the beginning. She's like, oh, Gerda, she's, she's just so slow and, and, but John oh. is, is so good. And it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She so, was like, really fooled by, by John. She's, mm -hmm. she is out of touch about herself and other people. Yes. Like the way she just goes and like thinks something and then she has to act on it. Like when she got like, oh, the holster, let me go to Henrietta's room. And then she's like, it's like 4.30 in the morning. What are you doing here? Like the birds aren't even up yet. Yes. It's like, yes. what about the holster? What did you do with it? So when she went, I honestly thought I was like, well, it is her, like Henrietta, yeah. because she's like, just like, oh, wow, that's true, the holster. So in my mind, I'm like, well, why are you worried if you didn't do it? But then when yes. she arrived at Gerda's house, I was like, oh, wow. Like, she, Agatha Christie did it again. She fooled yes. us. She's like, you think you got it, but you don't. I know. She's amazing for that. Full of surprises. Yes. And Hercules poured at the end when um, Henrietta's like, well, why are you going to tell Terry, the son? He's like, well, if he asks for the truth, I'm giving him the truth because he's a scientist. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they go for, just the truth. Wow. And to me, that, like, that felt very plural. Like, he is not going to lie to anyone to protect anyone's feelings. Like, yes. he's, he is, like, he is the truth. Like, you know, like, in a way, like, he's very... There's times that we've seen in some of the books, like not going to spoil, but there's some of the books where he does hate himself because he decides to not be completely truthful. And we see yes. how it hurts his character, like his own person, like it hurts him to yes. not be able to be completely true. So in this one, I was like, wow, that's, that's deep. Like he will still tell them the truth. It doesn't matter. Like, like how hard would it be also for him to tell the son? Your mom did it. Your mom killed your yes. dad. And then she was trying to kill someone else, but accidentally, I guess, committed suicide. Yes. Like it was, oh. it was so sad. Yes. Yeah, that but was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's that? I was like, it's so sad, but we really didn't need Coral in this, no. this standalone. <laughs> Poro, we love you, but yeah, yes. not very Poro heavy. I mean, I guess it's fun to see him, but he's not mm -hmm. integral to the case. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, this has been such a delight. I hope anyone who's watching this later on has enjoyed hearing <laughs> our thoughts, our wild Guesses are wildly wrong guesses. <laughs> so thank you for joining me on this ride, Jess. Thank you so much for inviting me, Kate. This was so fun. <laughs>